Kowalski, who do we have defusing that bomb downtown? Agent Giant, sir. Giant, you say? New guy? First name Green? Yes, sir. <sighs> Damn it. New guy, listen up. You're gonna be our eyes and ears on the ground. Tell us what you see. Uh, uh, yes, sir. I'm down to the last. There's only two wires left, and I don't know which one to cut. Which one do I cut, sir? Which which wire do I cut? Which wire do I Calm cut? Down, I don't son. know which wire to cut. Which wire? Need to cut the cut? blue wire. <laughs> cut the blue wire. Do you copy? Uh, yes, sir. I'm gonna cut the blue wire now. Here we go. Oh, oh shit. Oh shit. Shit. Um, uh, uh, All right, tell us what's going on. Uh, uh, um, uh, it's asking for some kind of a code, sir. It wants me to type in a code. And I don't know what to type. What's the code, sir? What do I type? What's the code? I don't know what the code is. What do I type? All right, rookie, you're going to have to type this in exactly. Don't make any mistakes. The code is... Patreon.com slash stories from the trail. Do you copy? Rookie, do you copy? Maybe he doesn't know how to spell Patreon, sir. Rookie, give us the situation. We need your report. Yes, sir, is that a forward slash or a backslash? You're going to school! Hello, hikers. Green Giant here, one of your hosts. This episode is called Hiker Box because it is pieced together from multiple recorded hiker hangouts that we do every week on Discord. If you're interested in joining one of our live recording sessions, or if you just want to chat with other hikers, there's a link to our Discord server in the show notes. Check it out. It's free. One quick technical note before we begin this show. Uh, Something that you'll notice immediately is that when Keith Foskett joins the call this week, he sounds terrible. I'm bringing this up to let you know that we know and that we've already done something about it. The next time you hear Keith Foskett join the show, he will sound a whole lot better. And that is thanks entirely to patrons of the show who support this ridiculous thing we do for as little as $1 a month. Hey, listen to this. It's Stories from the Trail. Sound like a beer can, <laughs> Larry. You know what that sound is? Got a little bit of, got a little yeah. long neck bottle is what you want. <laughs> <laughs> got a little bit of foam on my on my clown nose here. Hang on a second. This is gonna sound. It's gonna sound terrible. Plug your ears. Okay. <clears throat> got a little bit of foam uh, on on the the the. On, I got a little foam on my foam. You know the little styrofoam thing that goes over the top of a microphone. Uh, yeah. In in the biz, we call that a clown nose. So oh, really? Yeah. I okay. Yeah, that's I thought I mean. maybe you popped a clown nose on your nose. <laughs> you know, I I do that sometimes. Um, it, I can I, picture that. <laughs> yeah. I I don't I don't, but I actually huh. I, I was a weird kid, and <laughs> I actually. What do you mean was? Hi, Megan. I and I actually was. okay was still am. <laughs> don't worry i fit in with this bunch i've been an oddball <laughs> and i used to carry a clown nose around in my pocket a clown nose and a yo-yo and yeah. uh i would put on the clown I, nose i think that was in and i would do tricks with the yo-yo to abuse just like random people 
and uh, it didn't. <laughs> it didn't That's work. Really <laughs> You know, a lot of people have a fear of clowns, like a legitimate phobia. They sure so do. I've heard that. Really uh, a strange thing to keep in your pocket. Yeah. A, what, the fear of clowns? Just like a clown knows. It's like if, if so many people are afraid of it, why is it yeah. something you'd want to do? Like, are you trying to scare people, too? I was yeah. not. Well, you know, I tell you, there's a, unfortunately, there has been some people... You know, that were very abusive people that dressed as clowns, you know. Yeah. A lot of people. <laughs> I think one one of the funniest things I saw on the internet is when that whole clown thing was when people were were putting on clown costumes and like jumping out and scaring people and it kinda of became yeah. it was a meme. Yeah, that was a fad it's, for a minute. It was. Yeah. That remember... happened here here like a year or two ago, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was going on I here think. in Washington County big time, and Scanner Food was reporting it, but they were making fun of it. Yeah, or early, or I think it was early 2016 when the biggest problem facing America was just people dressed as clowns jumping out of cornfields, scaring, <laughs> scaring what passers. Was that, you said? that was early 2016, I think, is when is when clown oh, pranking was a meme. Uh, <laughs> or mostly just afraid of clowns. <laughs> those were good old days. <laughs> oh. That. But I think so. Somebody, uh, it was one of these yeah, things that got passed around. Called. Sorry, go ahead. Char, what's it? What's it officially called? It's called. I I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, but coulrophobia is the fear of clowns. Uh C O U L R O phobia. Phobia, yeah. Wow! And tonight we we all learned something. Yeah. Try to keep it informative. <laughs> Good job. Good job. <laughs> so speaking of the of the last <laughs> the last episode, um one of one of my favorite things to do is like little like little radio theater style bits. You know, where yeah. you know, where like I, I like to mess around with sound effects and do character voices yeah. and, and things like that. Um you know, there was when the first time we ever had Daniel on the show, we did our fake uh, announcements over the shopping over the store uh, PA system bit. And mm-hmm. what else? It's just like every little things like from, I don't know, like taking my taking the microphone out into the barn while it's raining to do the intro instead of just, you know, like sitting in a in a room with a microphone and saying stuff. But um, I don't know if anybody had a chance to listen uh, to the last one, but Sergeant Sizer made an appearance at the beginning of of the uh, yeah of the episode that, that was a good one and uh, I, I I think we, yeah I remember it. That, was good. that was good thank you thanks uh, I, and one of the things I think I'm gonna do is like the next time I do one of those I'm gonna have some I'm gonna have like some cameras going or something to do just like a little bit of like a how it's made and uh, I've already been doing screen captures of the editing process and, you know, for people who are like super nerdy and want to know the behind the scenes stuff, like I'm going to put together um, like a little video that shows how each episode is made uh, just cause it's kind of, it's kind of fun and I like doing stuff like that. And maybe, you know, if one or two people wants to see it, you know, maybe we'll throw it up on the Patreon or something or just up on YouTube or whatever. But uh, I don't know. Just, that was just like some random thoughts that I was, I had before, uh, before we, we get things going tonight. Uh, what else did I want to say that I think is important? Oh, here's something that's kind of neat that uh, I don't think too many people know, but uh, Reptar is now officially a co-host of the show. So congratulations to Reptar. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So this is the part where the the listeners the listeners at home can't see this, but the the chat room is just exploding right now. We're crashing the internet with people who are congratulating <laughs> Reptar in silent text on the screen right now. If we were a sitcom, this is where we would edit in some applause or something, or maybe like confetti falling edit from in the screen. Some applause. <laughs> yeah. So Reptar is going to be uh, Reptar. You're going to start hearing a lot more of Reptar's voice. So I hope you guys hope you guys are okay with that. I think Reptar is an excellent, uh, he has an excellent YouTube channel, and I, I think he does a good job. Uh, yeah, good enough for me. Thanks, Larry. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't just tell anybody that either, you know. So. 
No, I really do. I think you're you're sharp, man. Keep it up. I'll tell you, I really like I've been keeping up with the black latch in there a little bit. I really, pretty, pretty, uh, Oh He's yeah, yeah. Speaking speaking of of Black Alachin, who was on, uh, I think like two or three episodes ago. I think number twenty five, we had Black Alachin on, and he was talking about getting his YouTube videos ready to release his videos about his bicycle trip up the uh, Underground Railroad Trail. And I think he's up to, I think his third YouTube video in that series is out now. So he's putting yeah. a lot of time and effort into editing those. And I'm going to confess, I haven't watched, uh, I haven't watched any of them. I just, I, you watching. I watched part of the, part of the third one today. I'm going to go, I got it, got it on save videos, you know, so. Yeah. I, I know they're good because I've seen some of his, his AT videos and other things that he's done, but, uh. Yeah. You know, I just don't have a lot of time in my schedule to watch YouTube videos. Daniel does that though. When we have, when Daniel gets back on, we can have him talk about his favorite YouTube, his favorite hiking YouTubers. Have you watched any of Brent Garvey's? Uh, I guess not. But he just got done doing the Florida Trail. He's the guy that we we talked to last time, wasn't he? Um, right. When we did our trail traditions. Uh, I have... Yeah, he just got back yesterday from Florida, so I guess he's not coming over tonight. He, he he's I, I sent him a link out to you so I mean yeah I I have not watched any of his YouTube videos I have not watched uh I don't I haven't watched Darwin Reptar I'm sorry I haven't watched your yeah. YouTube videos I do I did uh, buy your movie when it came out though because the trailer for that kicked ass and sucked me in right away and I'm a sucker for slick editing and a good soundtrack so you know like that's a, you know I'm into a good documentary but um. You know, you, YouTube videos uh, are just kind of, I don't know, it's not, it's kind of, it's not really my thing. Uh, I know a lot of other people are into them and we'll, we'll talk to some YouTubers. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you what, I'm talking about, I'm sorry, I don't, uh, go ahead, Reptar, I'll stay out of it. Well, I was just going to say, uh, thanks, Gary. I do appreciate that. And uh, in other news, the documentary actually just won an award at a film festival. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the Sierra oh, wow. Award and uh, Fighting. Uh, the Mountain Film Festival out there in Mammoth, California. Awesome. Congratulations. Well, I definitely have to watch it now and put it over on the Crazy Larry's, you know, the EMB thing. You know, talking of which, uh, y'all ever watch that movie Southbounders? I it was like a, not. It, it was it, it was shown at the 2006 uh, Trail Days. And I'll tell you what, there's a lot of people's made like short films and different things like that about, you know, just stories of the Appalachian Trail, I think, you know, and stuff. And then maybe have a show with some of them people one night. If they do. Well, I tell you, it's an excellent movie. Uh, I was, it was like, uh, let's see, I guess it was uh, 2003, they were filming it. In Hot Springs, part of it in Hot Springs, and uh, I was hanging out there at Bluff Mountain out there was Dan Gallagher, so they was doing a scene, a kissing scene over in front of the post office, and uh, I said, I wonder what they're filming about, and Dan goes, I don't know, they, they're staying out there at the hot tubs, I heard they're filming porn. <laughs> I, I, I don't I know if that... that... Man, there was that movie, South <laughs> <laughs> it's all downhill from here. You know? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Uh, yeah, that's I, that, that's the kind of thing that would kind of keep me out of the hot tub. I guess it depends on who's in the porn. There's one I saw on Netflix a while back, uh, Mile, Mile and a Half. That oh, was a really yeah, good, one. A good one. Mile, Mile and a Half? Yeah. It's about uh, hiking? Yeah, it's about the John Muir Trail. Oh, okay. Okay, so since we're doing we're doing movies, I'll recommend one that is not necessarily a hiking movie, but a climbing film called Meru. Has anyone seen that? Uh -huh. Yes. M E R U oh. is the title. That was that was shot by the same guy that uh, did Free Solo, that just won the Oscar. About uh, Alex Honold. Am I saying his name right? Yeah, the free climber. He just free climbed El Cap. Freaking insane. Definitely watch that movie. Yeah, yeah I think I saw him on. I saw that. 
Them guys, them guys that do that, man, they... Okay, so the JMT movie is called Mile, Mile and a Half. Uh, you know, kind of like some, someone in the chat was just asking. So the title is kind of like what you would say, you know, somebody asks you, how much farther is it to the... Oh, another mile, mile and a half. Um, Meru is... It's a climbing movie. I can't remember the names of uh, of the, the people who it's about, but it's it's just this ridiculous story about this this insane climb it's more difficult than everest everybody always tackles everest because it's the tallest uh meru is renowned for its extreme difficulty many people have died attempting this and i don't want to give away too much of the story but they spend i forget how many nights was it like five nights longer than they planned suspended from the side of a cliff you know how rock climbers will anchor their tent or anchor like a, a hammock system to the side of a cliff wall and just spend the night there. You know, they're just spent yeah. the night suspended from the side of a cliff in crazy, insane blizzard conditions. And one of the guys on the team, I think had recently cracked his skull during his training for the event. And like, they thought he was going to die. So half of the story is about his recovery. And the other half of the story is about them, trying to get to the top of this thing. It's just insane. It's called Meru, M-E-R-U. And like Reptar yeah, said, Renan, it's... Renan Ozturk was the guy who cracked his skull. Yeah, and Jimmy Chin is the guy who did the who, uh, did the film, created it. Uh, he was the cameraman, and he's also the guy who just won the Oscar for uh, Free Solo. Jimmy Chin is a probably one of my favorite uh, National Geographic photographers as well. He's been doing, he has, he has a, uh, a company called Camp 4 Collective. If you ever get the opportunity to just look them up, it, it's definitely worth it. Mark Calcaney with, it, it gets the fact checker credit for this week's episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I have to agree. Jimmy Chin is the man. Yeah, he's been climbing with, uh, there's a whole, with Conrad Anchor, the client, that climbing community is, is kind of, when you talk about tight knit, Conrad Anchor was, uh, climbing partners with a guy named Alex Lowe, who probably was one of the best alpine climbers of all time. And, uh, he, uh, Alex Lowe died in, I think it was, he was ski. He was skiing on the side of. I think it was on the side of Everest, um, and he got caught in a landslide and uh, in, in an avalanche. Conrad Anchor was his best friend, and he actually ended up mar- marrying uh, Alex Lowe's widow later on and taking care of the kids. Uh, it's kind of that. That whole story is a is a really interesting story if you ever get a chance to read Conrad Anchor's life. Yeah, I think they actually mentioned that in Maru, too. Is that how you say it, Maru? Maru? If if I'm not mistaken, I could be. <laughs> I mean, I I I about automatically assumed. I'm gonna, let me just try that again. See, that's even further evidence that I'm probably the one who's mistaken. I can barely speak. I don't know, Maru. It's spelled Maru, but it's pronounced luxury yacht. <laughs> Oh God! Pronounced how? <laughs> You're such a good dad with all your dad jokes. Um, <laughs> luxury yetched. <laughs> Maru converted to I don't see it. Okay, throat wobbler mangrove. <laughs> it's it's spelled yes, that's right. It's spelled. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> It's spelled throat warbler mangrove, pronounced luxury etched. Hey, speaking of silly <laughs> British stuff, I think I can hear Fozzie. Yeah, I'm here. You know, my sound has just kicked in, and I'm now kind of uh, wishing you hadn't. Cause I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> we had somebody a, a couple of weeks ago try to try to pause the podcast while we were speaking. <laughs> Was the um, your pronunciation in the room again, Green Giant? Can you just say that one more time? Oh, thro- uh, it's spelled throat warbler mangrove, but pronounced luxury yetched. 
<laughs> what is what does that even mean? How, I, I'm I'm kind of shocked that you're that you don't that you're not getting this. Um, oh my god, it's so no, bad! It's no, so okay, bad. Bro. Yeah, no, this it's a classic uh, classic Monty Python reference, and maybe it's a bit. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's a bit presumptuous of me to I assume. There was a Monty Python yeah, Presumptuous of me to assume that our, our uh, featured Brit this week doesn't know a, a good John Cleese reference. Yeah. Um, that would explain it. I never watched. Um, I never watched Mount Monty Python. I, I think I saw the. Um, uh, is it the parrot sketching pet shop or something? I think I saw about half a half a minute of that and. Uh, I never actually watched Monty Python. I don't know why. I think I was probably too young. Okay. My parents probably shielded me from it, but I haven't. Uh, it's one pleasure in life I haven't um, experienced yet. Perhaps I need to get onto that. Well, it, it sounds like your parents are very sensible people then, because it was, <laughs> it was very silly. It was very silly. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've been going through a phase lately. We've been watching an awful lot of it. Uh, I think we talked about this. I guess it's not really a phase because you were first on our show about a year ago. And one of the things, one of the topics I remember us discussing was British television. And I just, I was rattling off all these titles that Katie and I have been watching late, lately and you didn't recognize any of them. You're not really much of a TV watcher at all, are you? Um, I kind of used to be. Um, I guess for the last year or so, I've just kind of discovered YouTube. There's just so much good stuff on YouTube. But used when it first sort of started out, it was, it was a bit rubbish. But I've just kind of got addicted to YouTube. And I don't really watch, you know, sort of standard British TV anymore. Buzzy, are you, um, are you in England now? I am. Okay. What oh. time is it over there? Uh, it's officially tomorrow now. Halfway into tomorrow, half an hour into tomorrow, it's uh, it's half past midnight. So it's Thursday, then. It? It's Thursday, yeah. I've been talking to a friend of mine who's in the Philippines, and and they're like twelve hours ahead. Yeah. Okay. Well, as as I'd normally say on the show, I, I'm, I am officially from the future. <laughs> from, from the future. From the future. Well, yeah. From the future, yeah, yeah. You are. Perhaps I should yeah. just change change my name to Marty McFly or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we we uh, made a Marty McFly reference last time too, because we learned that Fozzy will do just about anything if you call him a chicken. <laughs> You're right. right. I've forgotten about that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, since since it is already tomorrow in England, and uh, you know we we don't want to keep Fozzy up too much later. Uh, you know, it is way past his bedtime after all. Uh, I think we, we've got a, like a, a loosely organized series of topics to discuss this evening. We'll see how far we get through them. Uh, you know, nothing that we, I don't think we can spend in it, you know, an entire 90 minutes talking about poop or anything like that. But, um, are you sure about that? I bet we could. <laughs> yeah, we could. I, I bet if we, if we really, you know, if we really struggled and, and and strained and grunted, we could squeeze out, you know, God. a uh. big fat episode about uh, about turds. No, um, <clears throat> I, I was uh, I was in our Discord. Our Discord, by the way, doesn't just run while we're recording shows. It's on, you know, it's something people can hop on pretty much any time. And I was uh, I was checking out some some of the chat that was happening a couple uh, days ago, and I forget who it was. Uh, but somebody asked if we could talk about uh, about gear again, but from the perspective of really cheap gear solutions. So, you know, specifically, what I was thinking would be interesting would be if you if you guys know or can think of any uh, like homemade solutions to expensive problems. I think is a good way to good way to phrase it. Okay, um, I've I've only actually ever made one. I was trying to think about this earlier, and I think I've only ever made one uh, item of gear. Um, if I went through my rucksack, which is in the wardrobe, I'd probably have found more. But um, the only thing I ever made was a pot cozy, um, and that was just before the Pacific Crest Trail. But that thing is fantastic. Um, this is like a 
you know that stuff they it's kind of like silver coloured bubble wrap material the sort of thing you put on your car windscreen um, to keep the sun out in the summer is everybody with me here so far ok so you kind of cut two circles one for the top of the pot one for the bottom and then like a strip that goes around the side and you tape it all together and it kind of insulates your pot, so you, you pour the boiling water, or you, you heat, your, heat your water up, you put your, your dehydrated meal in there, you put the top on, and you just put it in the pot cosy, and it just cooks. And it's like piping hot for even 15 minutes, 15 minutes later. Um, and the thing's brilliant, I've used it every, uh, every time I sort of go out uh, on an overnight, or I, I take it with me, it's ridiculously light. It saves you fuel as well because you're not having to sort of simmer for 15 to 20 minutes. As soon as the water's heated up, that's you just sort of turn it off. And the other great thing is, um, I don't know if anybody agrees with this, but you, you know all the handles with pots when you're trying to get out of a pot and you're trying to hold this flimsy handle and it just kind of seems a bit awkward. But when you've got this, uh, the pot cosy on, the handles kind of fold in, and you can just hold the base or the bottom of your pot without burning your hands. Um, anyway, that's my um, that's my contribution. I like it. And uh, someone in the chat, um, Earth King, is that a M? Bummy? Earth King Bummy? Earth King Boomy is how I would say it. Bummy? Boomy? It's definitely a bummy, I think. It's boomy. It's boomy. Reflective, yeah, yeah, reflective. The man himself okay. correcting me. Gary and I can't pronounce words. Uh, Earth King Boomy has informed us that that silvery stuff is called reflectix, like reflect at the end. In case you want to Google it to go and find it. You know, I think the the classic cheap solution is. The one that you probably have heard a million times, maybe our listeners haven't, is using a trash compactor bag as a pack liner. Yeah, I did that on the AT. I think that's where that that sort of thing is the most popular. Also make a trash bag into um, a a waterproof cover for your backpack if you get creative. Um, And I, I am not familiar with this, but the DIY alcohol stove made of a soda can oh yeah that's a cat food food can know how to make that and want to explain a little bit more about that since i am very ignorant on that topic that's got to be i think the 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 alcohol stove i I think is probably got to be sort of right up in the top three homemade bits of hiking gear there is i think there's 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 info all over the web I've never made one, but um, it looks pretty easy. Basically, all you do is you take a cat food can and uh, <clears throat> a hole punch, and you just punch holes around the uh, the top of it. Like once you take the lid off, empty the cat food out, you punch a couple holes around the top of it, uh, so the oxygen can get into the fuel, and then you know. You pour your alcohol in, and boom, you got a stove. The girl that I was hiking with on the AT uh, made her own, and Can it worked out great. That's surprisingly simple. I thought it was more complex and involved. It's literally just a metal can with holes in it. Yeah, that's and you it. just light the alcohol. What proof of alcohol should you use? Like, should you use vodka, or are you talking like? <laughs> no, this is. Isn't it like rubbing alcohol? Like you use rubbing alcohol? Most people uh, use heat. Yeah. Alcohol. Yeah, say that again, so, please. Yeah, there's like a yellow bottle called Heat that you can pick up at most gas stations and things. That the H. That's what a lot of people use. E E T Heat. Heat spelled like feet. Oh, Gamera in the chat. Here's another okay. classic cheap solution: using Tyvek, piece of Tyvek, as your ground cloth. Or for a even lighter weight option um you can go to like a hardware store you know home depot kind of place and buy window insulation uh gosh what is what is the name of it oh my gosh this is gonna drive me nuts but 
that's what I use. It's like a, a clear plastic that weighs less than Tyvek. It's not as durable, but oh, Polycro. Polycro. P- yeah, P O L Y C R O. And it's not as durable as Tyvek, but it'll run you about, you know, eight dollars. Oh, okay. And yeah. So if you're, you know, thinking about paying, I don't know, what is it, like sixty or seventy five bucks for that big Agnes ground sheet. <clears throat> yeah, I'd go with Polycro. It weighs less and uh yeah, save you a bunch of money. So is that polycro thing the stuff that just looks kind of like uh, just like thin polythene, just like thin see-through polythene? Clear, that's right? Like, yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's it like almost, what you use it to weatherize looks, your home? Yeah, it's like used for window insulation. It, all, it always looked really kind of sort of fragile. That you, as soon as you put it on the ground, put your tent on top, and if you sat on it, it just kind of looked like, you know, everything, all the sticks and the, the ground stuff would sort of go through it. Yeah, well, there's different uh, thicknesses to it, and that took me a while to kind of experiment with because the first uh, two times that I had bought it, like you said, it basically just exploded if you weren't extremely careful with it. Um, but I've got this stuff now that's slightly thicker and yeah, I used it for, I don't know, a thousand miles and it still, oh, cool. okay. st- okay. still going strong. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to be taking that out on the PC2 with me this year. And presumably a lot lighter than Tyvek, even though Tyvek's been light on its own. Yeah. I don't know, you know, obviously people cut to their own shelter dimensions but yeah the yeah. piece i have is relatively lightweight definitely lighter than the tyvek that i was using would you say that a ground cloth or ty- tyvek or some equivalent is an essential piece of gear could you just save a bunch more money and wait by not using one at all uh, it, um, what's the downside what's the downside to that i mean a bit i think the, i don't know how much the tyvek is i mean it's only I don't know how much you spend on a ground ground sheet out of time, but I don't know, maybe it's 20, 30 bucks. It's not expensive. Um, I think it's worth its weight in gold because you've only, you've only got to have something go through the ground sheet of your tent, and that's, uh, you know, that's big, that's big bucks to get your tent repaired. Plus, you don't really want to be uh, sending your tent back to the repairers in the middle of the three like to get it, uh, to get it fixed. Um, I always used Tyvek as something to sit on as well. It was nice to, you know, I used to sort of take it out on rest breaks and uh, just use it as something to sit on as well. But, uh, yeah, I think it's worth its weight in gold. Well worth the well worth the investment. I tried to do the Tyvek thing myself before my through hike, but I could not find um, any place that would sell me a small amount of Tyvek. I don't had... I don't even know what the dimension was that they sold it in, but it was, I think it might've been like by the roll. There was no way for me to, in my area at least, get a smaller piece of Tyvek. So that might pose a little bit more of a, um, a barrier for some people if you can't find it. Yeah, it was similar, uh, similar situation in, in England when everybody first started using it and you just couldn't get hold of it. And then a few of the... Um... Outdoor supplies over here cottoned on to the fact that everybody was after it and they were buying the rolls in and they'd sort of cut it, sort of, uh, cut it the size. So I think it was a set width, maybe a meter or two meters or something. And then you just, I always thought it'd be quite funny if you were, if you were doing one of the long trails in the States, <laughs> like maybe the, the PCT or the AT. And, uh, I always thought it'd be funny if you, some of you sort of popped out of the woods and there, you know, there's a building site and they're putting some houses up. And all these houses, they they just covered in you know in the Tyvek, and occasionally you get a three hiker over there just cutting a piece out for their use. So these all these holes, these houses have square holes on the outside. <laughs> 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 I guess that's one way of getting out of it. I got a couple more. What you got, man? Wallet. Oh. Either okay. duct tape or just a plastic bag. <laughs> Yeah, you can. I've I've used both. Isn't duct tape kind of heavy though? 
Eh. Like a duct tape wallet's kind of heavy. I mean, that's why I switched to the uh, plastic bag. Yeah. Plastic bag's all you, all you really need for a wallet, isn't it, if you think about plastic it? Plastic bag's for everything. Plastic yeah. bag first aid kit. Plastic bag trinkets. Plastic, plastic bag wallet. Plastic bag rucksacks. <laughs> bag, inside a bag, inside a bag, inside a bag. I believe we established last time that uh, a lot of hikers will use plastic bags to haul their feces out uh, of extreme leave-no-trace areas, right? Also, I, I learned this new thing recently. Reptar's on a poop packer. That, uh, a poop packer. Oh, my God. That's not a yeah. Sorry. Sorry. It's a new type of hiking, poop packing. Um, bags can be used to keep your feet warm. Like the like the oven bags. The Wait, a, what? Yeah, this is a real thing. I went on a hike with Gut Hook um, this winter, and he used plastic foot bags. You can actually buy fancy foot bags on some, I don't know, one of these gear websites. But this was just like a Reynolds wrap oven bag that you. I guess you'd put in the oven. I've never put plastic in the oven, but apparently this is a thing that people do. Um, <clears throat> came about like in the fifties, but oh, never put it... plastic in the oven. Always the grill. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't <laughs> get this, but it's a, it's a real thing. You put on your, your thin liner socks and then you put on these plastic bags and you use like a rubber band or something to hold them up. And then you put on your thicker wool socks over that. And it acts as a, a moisture barrier so your feet don't get wet holds in, holds in heat. So this is something that people do when they're winter hiking and need more insulation, which, I mean, you don't do a lot of on the AT, but there are people who start really early, so maybe foot bags. I, uh, I went to, yeah, it was just like some place that was selling subs and got a couple sandwich bags when I was on the PCT. Uh, once it started snowing and yeah there was a few days where i had sandwich bags on my feet Thanks. i was watching a guy a, a cyclist the other night who wraps his feet in uh tin foil uh do you call it tin foil over there or aluminium foil yes. sorry aluminium yeah. foil. okay he wraps his feet in aluminium foil and then he puts his cycling shoes on, and then he wraps his cycling shoes in cling film. And apparently, it's a, a very good way of a keeping your feet warm because the foil is reflecting the heat, uh, and also keeping them dry because of the cling film. I don't think it would work when you're hiking, um, uh, but sort of on a cycle ride, you know, maybe one, two, three hours. Uh, apparently, it works very well. Another thing that I would suggest or is an option on the cheap anyway is creating your own gear. Um, there's a, I got a video on my channel that uh, Heidi uh, basically shows how to create your own enlightened equipment. Uh, well, it's modeled after enlightened equipment uh, quilt. For, I don't know, it's like a little over $100, I think. Uh, and, yeah, with the use of a website called Rip Stop by the Roll. They sell a lot of the fabrics and things for, uh, you know, like sleeping bag stuff or what have you. So what do you think about someone who has little or no sewing experience tackling a project like that? Uh... I would, I would probably, you know, just get a piece of fabric and just practice on it a little bit okay. before you yeah. actually, you know, dive into it. I mean, if you know somebody that has a sewing machine or whatever, um, hmm. you know, or try it's, to... It's pretty safe to give that a try. I mean, the AT with little to no experience, and I did fine. I feel like sewing is a little bit safer. You're in the safety <laughs> you of think? your own home. You're typically in a seated position. <laughs> you could just do you a don't trial have to run, filter, make a pillow. Filter your water <laughs> in between stitches. Water. 
you don't you don't have to try to figure out like how you're gonna stay warm or dry. Like I feel like yeah, it's a pretty safe pretty activity fair. to be done at home if you can afford the materials. You don't have to worry about a bear coming in and knocking your spool the, off of the that wildlife interference thing. is minimal. <laughs> okay. I guess was... probably, I guess this is probably the point where we should uh, we should make a mention to Ray Jardine, I suppose, is it not? Is mentioned what? Uh, Ray Jardine. Have we all heard of Ray Jardine? Oh, I don't know what that is. Uh, oh, it's a guy. Ray. Ray's his first name, and it's Jardine or Jardine is, oh. is his surname. Has nobody here heard of Ray Jardine? Ray Jardine. I, I am not. Him. Okay. Um, okay. Ray Jardine is um, is probably the go-to. I'm trying to put a link up on the screen. Um, is probably the go-to resource for. He makes his own uh, tarps, he makes his own tents, he makes his own quilts, he makes his own sleeping bag. And if you go to his website, I'm pretty, I think I'm right in saying all the plans are on there. Uh, here we go. Uh, hey, Straight Fossey. out of the early 2000s. That's a solid resource if you're trying to make your own gear, it looks like. Just checking out the site. Nuclear. Nuclear, that's the word you're trying to get me to say, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And, and we, I know that's the wrong way to say it. But... That's why I'm having a hard time with it. Good. Launch the nuclear weapons. Now sound a little more alarmed. I, I don't know how to act. Surprised. Um, launch the nuclear weapons. Perfect. If any, if no one else has any, any cheap gear things, then I've got. To I got. Go for it. I got one more. Do it. So, we were talking about stoves. Um, you know, some people in the ultralight community go stoveless, and one of the solutions that I see people use for that, um, Jupiter, for example, he just has a small little bottle. And uh, just cold soaks all his food. He'll throw some water in and some uh, some uh, some beans or something like that, a little taco mix, and then some Fritos into it, and just eat that. Mm. So if you want to go stoveless, that's an option. Beans and fire starter. Mm. <laughs> Muy caliente. Or picante, rather. <laughs> All right. So I got two more things that I want to that I want to talk about uh, when we've got about thirty minutes left. So what I want to do, I'm going to put a link in the chat here. So bear with me for just a second. And now Bobby's we are being off. <laughs> Just would now be dive bombed by uh, British kamikazes. I don't know. Okay. All right. So I I put this link in the chat uh, to an article that I found on the Trek today, which I found interesting. And the article is called "Overcoming the Desire to Quit During a Through Hike." And the article is written by, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say the, the person's first name, not for privacy reasons or anything, but because it's the same name as the Amazon Echo device that starts with a letter A and I don't want to do, have. Do you want me to just say it, Gary? Cause I don't, I don't have high tech stuff like that at my house. Well, I know, but there are people listening. There are, there are millions and millions of listeners oh. Who have... You think that you saying the name will? <laughs> Don't you have to say "Hey" in front of it? No, you just have to say the name, and then 
and then the command and oh, so bad for people with that name yeah i know what so we can design choice <laughs> so this article is written by alex a bonsai is her trail name shapiro um so i think if, if we said you know i don't know i'm just trying to figure out what the device would do if you said or uh, her, her bonsai shapiro <laughs> <laughs> what, what would that automatically order for you? Who knows? But um, her article is from February 26th of 2019. So it's only a couple of days old as of this recording. And it is called Overcoming the Desire to Quit During a Through Hike. Oh, yeah. Houston, He's quitting have... right now. He's getting on a plane and leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> and it's it's a fairly lengthy <clears throat> article it's a it's a good you know it's probably like a good 10 minute read and i'm not going to read the entire thing but i am going to pull passages from this to uh to share with you and hopefully spur a little bit of discussion uh <laughs> okay I, don't look at the chat room gary they're distracting don't look at the chat room okay um so uh alexa begins with oh shit i said her name <laughs> <laughs> trying so hard not to say it okay the article begins it took me approximately 60 days to want to quit the pacific crest trail until that point the trail had been relatively smooth sailing sure there were the days that i hated putting one foot in front of the other with every fiber of my being i would take my time packing up in camp making excuses to stay in my quilt just a little bit longer then by the time i put my pack on and laced up my shoes i would spend hours negotiating in my head to somehow make the 25 miles seem more like five you ever have one of those kind of days probably probably a bunch of them yeah so uh she goes on to you know to write uh like even on those days at the end she would feel rewarded for her efforts even though my mentality wasn't there, the physical efforts it took for me to get from point A to point B felt admirable, and I knew I was exactly where I was supposed to be. I didn't want to give up the trail. I was committed to doing the long haul. But day 60 felt different. Uh, we woke up just beyond a three-mile patch of snow that we struggled through the day before. We were one day out of Etna, hoping to make it north to get a hitch into town the following day. The trail seemed relatively clear, and with only 14 miles to hike, we assumed the day would be easy. I won't go into too much detail. If you want the full story, see my... This is her saying this, by the way. I won't go into too much detail. If you want to see my full story, she links to a post called I Am Not a Mountaineer. Uh, she's a pretty good storyteller and goes into a little bit more detail about uh, you know, this rough, rough day that she had on the snowy side of a mountain. Uh, she goes on to say, let's just say that the 14 mile day turned into an 11 hour ordeal. I spent hours perched in precarious positions, trying to muster up the courage to hoist myself over huge patches of ice and snow in order to get where I needed to go. I felt unsafe, particularly, sorry, unsafe physically and mentally exhausted and totally ready to give up on the trek altogether. Not the website, her, the, her trek. Uh, after a full zero day and two Neros on the other end, I still hardly wanted to get back to on the trail. So why did I? And then she goes on to list her reasons. But, uh, you know, before we go too much further into this article, I want to hear what, you know, like, what do you guys think about uh, about this so far? I mean, Most I think everybody's... Days. Yeah, I think everybody's had... Most probably people, one of those days hardest thing uh, um, about the trail and the reason that a lot of people quit they don't know how to mentally get through it right and they say that um, the, the psychological part of through hiking is, is 90% of it 90% psychological 10% um, 10% physical I mean your body generally has always got to work it's your mind that um mind that'll <clears throat> cast doubts and possibly uh, weaken your resolve. I mean, I've been there. I've had those when I wanted to quit. Um, I think everybody wants to quit, quit at some point on a true hike. A lot of people do. Um, I think if you somehow kind of remind yourself, I mean, it's easier said than done because when you are having a bad day, you know, I it think really does sort of, it really does weigh you down. But I think if that's the one part of the traveler's character, really, you know, when I get back from the ice, I think, right, you know, I just did 
you know, 2,200 miles on the A2 and I had some really bad weather and, you know, that time I busted my ankle up and you fight through it or when you get back, it's, I think that's the part of the trail that builds character and sets you up for, um, or makes you a stronger person because when you get these other challenges in your life, um, whether it be something at work or just, I don't know, anything really, it's, it's kind of like if you if I always say if you've done a long hike, if you've done a through hike, like two thousand plus mile through hike, you can do anything. Um, but it is it is easier said than done and until you're in that situation on the trail, it's uh, you can relate to that. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I mean and to kinda talk about wanting to quit long, awkward pause. Or quitting in general. I think. Do we still have sound? I can hear Reptar just fine. Long awkward pauses. Um, Uh, Megan, if you can hear us, (laughs) it once again it sounds like you can't hear us because we you you think there's an awkward pause, but Reptar is speaking. A bitch. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, I'll just continue anyway. So I'm gonna leave and come back. So another thing I think that's kind of important to talk about in terms of quitting is it's not always because, you know, you're just mentally done or physically done. Um, I think other factors that come into play for a lot of people are finances. You know, people go out with X amount of money expecting to spend, you know, X amount of money and then going over budget and have to get off because of that. And or uh, in the case of my last PCT hike, I decided to, you know, quit, if you will, uh, because the weather was just too bad. And it was more of a question of, do I want to risk my life just to say, oh, yeah, I threw hike this year or, you know, get off know that I'll be safe, the trail's not going anywhere, and then get back on, you know, this year. Yeah, th- those are all excellent, excellent points. And, and uh, I mean, it's, it's a really deep personal decision whether to continue or not. Like, it's, you know, in some cases, it's, you know, like a, like a life-altering choice for a lot of people, you know. And, you know, I- is it worth risking an injury or you know, truly harming yourself to achieve a goal. Yeah. I mean, that's all, those are real things that go through our heads on the trail. Um, Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, like when I actually made the decision to get off the PCT, like I just started bawling, you know, uh, because I wanted to keep going, but I just knew that it wasn't mm -hmm. the right thing to do, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, that was probably one of the toughest decisions like trail wise that I think I've ever made. Did, did you feel, um, I don't know, did you feel somehow that you, that you let, you know, that you let yourself down or that you let other people down or like, I don't know. Um, you I, feel think, like... I think it was more that I let myself down than anything mm-hmm. because it's like, you know, obviously I told everybody, Hey, I'm going out and I'm through hiking this year. And that was the intention. And, you know, the, at no point in time was I ever like, I'm not through hiking the trail. Uh, and then it just got to the point where it was like, I don't know. All right. There's like a foot of snow on the ground. This is right. dangerous. Like everybody I know is leaving. And my phone is like, you know, going from 30% back to zero because it's so cold out that, Oof. you know, my GPS is just shutting off. So, I mean, it just, you know, it got to the point that it was like, okay, you know, I, I have to do, I have to pick the safe option. And like I always say, you know, rule number one of the trail, don't get dead. And that applies to every trail. Oh, for real. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, also, I think it's also worth saying as well, that if you, if you get off, I mean, obviously sometimes you have to get off trail because you have to get off. I don't know. You, you Maybe break a leg or something. You're physically the girl. One of the girls that I was hiking with broke her leg uh, on the PCT. 
and I mean, she was devastated. So I can only imagine, you know. Okay, Eco... there's definitely a, pl- a plethora of reasons why people would have to quit, other than just, you know, mentally or, well, I guess, physically giving up. Yeah. So bon- Bonsai's question in the article where we where we left off was actually. I'll just read it again. She said, after a couple of zeros, I hardly wanted to get back on the trail. So why did I? So, you know, we, I think we, we talked about a lot of reasons why people might want to quit. Um, you know, and in a situation like this, you know, again, we haven't gone into the full details of this harrowing day that she had, but it sounds pretty rough. And, uh, we're all familiar with the phrase, don't quit on a bad day. You know, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that, that phrase is kind of, there's kind of a trap built into that because they say, don't quit on a bad day. You know, you'll, of course, you'll get the idea to quit during the bad day, but then they say, you know, wait a couple of days and then decide if you still really want to quit. So if you wait for a day that's not bad, it's a nice day. And you ask yourself, well, do I really want to quit? You're probably going to say no just because it's a nice day. I think it, the, the, it's a trick question that's designed to keep people on the trail. Uh, Unless they don't quit in town as well or don't quit in the trail. Which one is it? I'm just going to one right now. Oh, yeah. Don't quit. Oh, I forget how that goes. Do you, do you remember? I always get it the wrong way around, which is pretty crap, really, because I guess it's gone from you should get the right way around. But... Yeah, don't quit in it's town. It's easy to quit in town or something, but you never feel like quitting in town because you're sort of, you know, you're warm, you're, you're well fed. And... Yep. Okay, so Ecologic in the chat uh, suggested the break out your why I'm doing this list. And I think that kind of goes back to what Reptar and I were talking about as far as accountability goes. Uh, some people, when they start their long hikes, they make this why I'm doing it list and then they share it with people. This is uh, one, of the, one of the techniques that Zach Davis includes in his book, Appalachian Trials or Pacific Crest Trials. He recommends that you make this list and then share it with people as a way to form accountability. And for a lot of people, that's good because it can keep you going, but it can also become too much at some point. Um, you know, at some point, if you have too many people, I don't know what, you know, reading your blog or following your Instagram posts or too many people watching you hike, it, it gets to a point where you're not really doing it for yourself anymore. And, uh, you know, people can think like, oh, maybe I don't want to quit because I don't know, because so many other people are watching or whatever. And it starts to become, I don't know, not, ne- not necessarily your experience. I'm not saying there's a right way or a wrong way. And you know, or which way that is, but it's just, you know, an, an additional layer that I think comes with, you know, our ability to to basically broadcast our hikes these days. You know what I mean? I think that's a really valid point. Um, and this is a, they actually mentioned that in Free Solo, the movie, talking about, you know, you've got a movie crew filming you now. Like, are you doing it because all these people are watching, or? Are you doing it because, you know, are you doing it for the right reasons? And I was actually on the phone with Miss Janet a few days ago, and we had the exact same conversation talking about the fact that the trail has become so popularized that people, you know, they're building up fan bases and YouTube channels and, you know, like you said, Instagram and all these social media following. So then, you know, it's granted that that's what some people want out of it, I yep. guess. But, but, you know, are those the right reasons for doing it? And, so, yeah. you know, is he, is the, does the word right even apply to that question? You know, like, is there a right yeah. way at all? That's the that's a good point. Yeah, I think, you know, to talk about the list of reasons why you would hike, I, I know, you know, personally for me, anytime I hit a rough patch or had a, a bad day, um, I would always think, is this worse than being at home and going to work right now? Waking up and right. going to work. That's a really good point. You know? <laughs> That's and, a very good point. And that that kept me going many, many a days, you know, to just, you know, you're cold, you're wet, you're miserable, but then, you know, the sun will come out again, you know, and are, are you going to sit at home and think about, 
man, I should have just kept going, you know? So Bonsai goes on to write, while it's true that the why of your hike carries weight, it is just as important to identify the why behind your desire to quit. Uh, when I couldn't shake the desire to get off the trail, recognizing the root of the problem helped me work the logic through my decision. Uh, while it was easy to get wrapped up in the idea of wanting to sleep in a bed or missing my community or just wanting food that wasn't dehydrated, the truth behind wanting to quit wasn't strong enough to make me do it. Once I identified that, it was easy to stick with the miles that lay in front of me. So basically what you said, yeah, like you compare, you know, is this easier or harder than getting up and going back to work? Yeah, like, you know, that's that's basically it. You have to think about why, not just why you're hiking, but why you're quitting or why you're thinking about quitting because... Yeah, for sure. You know, as as we said earlier, and this is just as important, sometimes sometimes the it is the right thing to do you know like that's you know one of those undeniable where there is a right answer like you know to get off the trail sometimes there is a very glaring and clear right reason and you should and and it's hard yeah definitely and you know like you were saying it's a bit, uh, of, a, it's a bit of a life shock as well I mean, a of... yeah like one of the things you know that you were saying before mm -hmm. never you know, quit on a bad day. Well, they say, you know, what is it? there's more to it. It's what never quit on a, a bad day, an uphill, <laughs> a rainy day, or when you're hungry. And I mean, I always thought that that was the, like, I think that's actually a joke because the bottom line is, you know, you're always going uphill. You're always hungry. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was going like, to say, those are conditions that continue way <laughs> past the end of your hike. So just <laughs> never give up. Yeah. Never surrender. Yeah. So, you know, like uh, Pretzel at Mountain Crossing says, yeah, yeah. you know, it's just grit and stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> um, Pretzel's uh, doing the CDT this year, I believe. Is that is that correct? Do you know? I think uh, I saw that. I'm not sure. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. I haven't I haven't talked to him in a while. Yeah, Pretzel was but... a ridge runner for one or two years. Uh, a well-known face at mountain crossings, like day three on the AT. Cool guy. Yeah, he helped with a lot of the shakedowns. Uh, like, yeah, he did. He did what the AT and the PCT. I think already. so. Yeah, this will be his triple if he if he gets it this year. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> so speaking of triple crowners, there are uh, quite a few of these in Bonsai's article who she interviews. She talked to Anish. Uh, she talked to uh, she talked to Lint. I don't know if, how many people are familiar with Lint uh, and his his hiking. Um, in 2014, didn't you meet him on the trail? Uh, we never caught him. We saw his name. No, I I did. Oh, you did. I caught. I yeah. Where? Yeah, I met Lint. I was just separated that day, or, or like. No, no, it, it was while yeah. you were ahead of you as well. You and Lemmy were ahead of me because didn't Lemmy have a section of Lint's uh, foam sit pad, and <laughs> remember he was kind of Lemmy would say, oh, "Look, I got this from Lint. It's so he don't I don't want to wash it. It's so from somebody famous." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I oh, I met I wasn't with Lemmy when I met him though. I think I was I might have been alone. Uh yeah, I think tattoos I, though. Because yeah. we talked about them. So I feel like I've met him, but it could also be that he's in a couple of squatches films that I've seen a couple times available at squatchfilms.com. Gotcha. And uh Oh, you know, you it was definitely just for... lunch. That's what it was. Yeah. It was like a lunch spot at a random shelter on a slightly drizzly rainy sort of day in what state mm -hmm. i don't remember okay so ish so mark he's a pretty rad dude mark gets the the fact checker award for this evening and megan gets the uh the 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 double name drop award for you know, like oh i was just I, I happened to be hiking with gut hook the other day and uh oh and i, I just happened to run into lint at a shelter the other day <laughs> oh is is gut hook a name drop i guess i don't know i mean he's name got a, a brand named after him that's kind of significant he's like now one of my only friends in oh. this in like this general area since i just moved back here oh how's okay well how, how's how's all that going the new uh the new city and only having one friend 
Yeah. Well, actually, I a have sitcom. two friends now because his friend Hans is now my friend as well. So I have like two friends. We're gonna um, eat pie this Friday. That sounds awesome. Yeah, I'll take pictures and send it to you. I'm glad that you have friends, Megan. <laughs> Very <laughs> few, but they exist. <laughs> oh boy, I'm I'm curious to hear more about this pie. Uh, yeah, me too. Uh, uh, me too. I all I know is that I was. I was at work and I came back out um, to look at my phone and I had a string of text messages that was just talking about pie. And then there was like a cream pie joke reference in there. And I was a little bit disturbed. Not sure what I'm walking into. I just want to say I apologize to anybody that's hiking while listening to this mm-hmm. while we discuss delicious pie oh yeah so sorry oh god you're gonna have a rough couple of miles <laughs> yeah so we've got our, we got our, our poop talk out of the way pretty early although we had to divert to porn first uh <laughs> yeah yeah i was doing i was some typing in the chat so i was a little distracted and i just remember like checking back in mentally and listening to what was going on and then there was porn and uh-huh. I didn't understand why. <laughs> it took well, us a while to get to, to... to food, but we did eventually get there. Uh, what was I trying? I was trying to say something when I got distracted. Oh, it was my- I mentioned lint, and we went off on some kind of crazy rabbit hole uh, tangent. And I was just simply mentioning that in uh, in Bonsai's article that she talks to lint and Anish, who are both. Uh, I think An- Anish is also a multiple triple crowner now too, isn't she? With her calendar triple this year that she just finished that makes her a triple triple uh as well as lint so uh, you know they uh, she interviewed some people who basically what i'm trying to get to is that uh bonsai interviewed some people who have some serious hiking cred and a few miles under their under their hip belts uh and i will put a link to this article in our show notes so that you guys can read more about uh about this interesting topic I like that in her article, the overarching theme is, um, or it seemed, it seemed to be kind of introspection. Mm-hmm. I think that it's introspection, something the trail allows for a lot more than the real world. I mean, I think we all know that, but I, I think it's important to, when you're making any decisions, especially the big important ones about hiking to not just go with whatever your knee jerk reaction is just like with a lot of things in this world. Yeah. Knee jerk reactions are not always the best ones. Jules in the chat reminds us that Anish just put out a fantastic book. I believe the title of that book is Thirst. And that just came out. And a lot of people are giving her thumbs up. Uh, so, you know, I would say check out that book if you can. I can't, you know, I can't say for myself I've not read it, but uh, yep, now we've got five people. Yeah, there's a lot of people in the chat saying check out Thirst by Anish. Just came out. So on Amazon, free. thirst. There you go. Twenty six hundred miles to home. Not not a sponsor. For just here, do it. There you go. Uh, I don't yeah. know if it's on audio. Good question. <clears throat> you, All right. You, so last thing is it on audio. Oh, sorry, Gary. I cut you off because I no, I was trying cool. to understand what your question was that you were mumbling. Uh, well, I didn't say anything yet. I was getting ready to. I was going to say the last thing, the last thing that I want to discuss before. We sign off this evening is what's coming up in the next few days. The AT kickoff is this weekend. We are recording right now. Today is February 27th. There's only one day left in February. Day after tomorrow, the kickoff begins. Uh, Friday, Saturday, and a little bit on Sunday, there's, uh, uh, you know what? I, I, I would, I would say I'd put the schedule in the show notes, but by the time the show comes out, the kickoff will already have passed. Um, but there's a pretty full schedule and I've already talked to a lot of people who are going to let us record, uh, let, let us record their presentations. Odie is doing the welcome on Friday night. Judy Heartfire Gross, who we've had on the show before during our first gear episode of, uh, light heart gear intense. She is giving a one hour talk on dehydrating food for long hikes so we're gonna get as much audio from that as we can uh if the whole thing's interesting we'll just give you the whole thing we'll talk to her a little bit afterwards too so there's there's a show right there uh i'll be hosting a panel uh on saturday night with miss janet a recently finished through hiker a hostel owner and someone who is starting their hike that weekend 
So we're going to get four different perspectives on a series of trail related topics for that uh, and much more all to be recorded this weekend. I'm going to do my best. Uh, not going to make any promises on this one because it's the kind of thing that I've said I was going to do before and then failed on. Uh, but I'm going to try again because you just have to keep trying, right? Um, you don't quit. I'm going to try to either broadcast something live from the event or drop audio as quickly as I can so that it's at least semi-live broadcasts over the weekend. No promises. I'll do my best. I have no idea what the internet there is going to be like. Uh, but worst case scenario, I'll be recording a bunch of audio and bringing it back over the over the week and weeks that follow. Actually, worst case scenario, uh, the place is overwhelmed by zombies and uh, we all... <laughs> Die. Zombie apocalypse is always the worst case Horrible, scenario. Maggot infested, flaming zombie infested hellhole. That's the worst case scenario. Well, but just shy of that is, uh, you know, we don't get any audio. But I think we'll, I think we'll do fine. Yeah, that sounds pretty solid. Because I'm not going to be down there. Okay. So, oh, and also, uh, here's a couple other things that are interesting. Is that um, there's a, another podcast that we we sometimes refer to as our our sister podcast. I don't know, you know like how we have si- like there are sister cities and sister like sister things. I don't know why two shows are sisters, but anyway, there's this. It could be twins, <laughs> although I guess they're not identical. So, um, Megan, have you ever talked to Skip? I can't remember. From Happy Briefly. Camper Radio. Happy Camper Radio. Uh, Happy Camper Radio is actually how Daniel uh, Daniel and I met. And it's a long, it's kind of a long story, but we'll share it for, for some other time. But basically, Daniel lives next door to the guy who produces Happy Camper Radio. And uh, a couple of years ago, I had been on his show. And basically, that's how Daniel and I met. Anyway, Happy Camper Radio is going to be at the AT kickoff this weekend with their mobile studio as well. So we're going to be doing some joint podcasting with them. Uh, Skip's going to film a lot of things and put it on his YouTube channel. So you guys are going to get to to see a lot of the kickoff this year too. So, uh, Oh, and, and happy camper. Yeah, that's all. I'm sorry. I was going to say one more thing about happy camper radio, but I just realized I'm at the end of my list. So I'll edit that out to make myself sound smarter. <laughs> We are doing something new for stories from the trail for for the uh, 2019 hiking season. So, um, you know, we're a show produced, we're a production of thetrek.co, and there are currently three podcasts on our network. We've got Stories from the Trail, which you're listening to right now. Uh, Zach Davis is the host of Backpacker Radio, and Backpacker Radio recently spun off one of their recurring segments called Trail Correspondence, where they have people... Uh, who are hiking the trail, call in and uh, and basically tell their stories. So we're doing something similar this year, and I have already begun reaching out to uh, hikers who are on the Appalachian Trail this year. Uh, a couple of people who are actually starting in a few weeks. We've got one southbounder. People are already starting to send in their stories. And what I'd like to do on the show and during our live streams is share with you guys the updates that we're getting from these new hikers and uh, it'll give you the opportunity to either offer them encouragement in real time or answer their questions or maybe come up with questions that you'd like to ask them. So it's going to be sort of like the trail correspondence series, but we're going to have this be an interactive conversation between you know people who are on the trail and people who are listening to the podcast. So there's going to be some back and forth as we do our uh, our weekly recordings. Like I said, I'll play whatever messages I've received from them and then we'll, we'll, uh, comment or come up with questions. So let's start by uh, introducing our hikers who we're following this year. And I want to start with uh, our first one. This is a short, a short sound clip by a guy named Jeffrey. So let's hear what Jeffrey has to say. Hey, my name's uh, Jeffrey. I'm 20, just recently turned 20. Um, I go by tree a fair bit, have been in the past whenever I've hiked before. And I am going to be a Sobo for the Appalachian Trail this year. Woo. Um, I'm from New Hampshire. Pretty experienced in the woods. Um, I was in college, but it was, uh, it's been pretty rough this last year. So I'm, I'm taking a much needed break and, uh, hiking the trail. So that should be pretty good. It's been a dream of mine for a very good long while. 
Um, don't really know how to fill 20 more seconds, <laughs> but um, yeah, hoping to uh, get in talk, contact with you throughout the, throughout the trail. Yeah. I listened to that podcast like you sent me pretty good. All right. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> All right. So that's, that's Jeffrey. Uh, and I think he said at the beginning that his, he, uh, he goes by the, the name tree. So I guess, I guess he already has a trail name. Uh, New Hampshire guys uh, heading south. So good luck. Good luck to him. All right. The next one I want to introduce you guys to is, I'm going to save this one for last because it's the longest. All right. Uh, here, let's, let's meet Ashley. Hey there. My name's Ashley. I'm 27 years old and I was born and raised. I've been a registered nurse for over five years. Uh, four of those years being in the emergency department, and that's where my heart really lies. Um, and for the last two years, I've been doing travel nursing, or a little over two years. So about a week ago, I was thinking to myself, like, what am I going to do for my next job? I've got five months before nurse practitioner school starts in the fall in August. And, you know, what do I want to do? Where do I want to go? I kind of thought about it. And I, I don't know what even made me think of it, but I've wanted to do it in the past, like five months. That's that's enough time to hike the Appalachian Trail, right? So a week ago is when I thought of this. The next day I went to REI and got fitted for a backpack. And I'm starting next month. And I've got a lot of preparing to do still. And it's going to be a wild ride. I'm super excited. Now, this might push back nurse practitioner school a semester. and of come to the realization I don't want to stress about it you know I really want to do this hike and that's just going to be what it is so yeah that's me and I'm super excited to get out there Ashley's plans sound familiar yeah man good for her <laughs> I mean hey, take it taking that initiative and going for it man that's awesome Ashley's yeah going back to nursing too fast Say that again. I said I don't see her going back to nursing to crack her whole course of life. Just one little time she does do this, or if she does the whole thing, you know. Yep. <laughs> you see that a lot. A lot of people come out here and they got they just got out of college or getting ready to go somewhere or getting ready to go all at once. Their course changes in life. You know? yeah. I mean, you know, they get some time alone. Uh, valuable time alone in the woods, you know, and right. thinking, rethinking what, and then all oh, once, you know, that's one thing that I'm I'm looking forward to. I think here soon after the hiking season, get back out there, have some valuable time alone in the woods, you know. Mm-hmm. Yep, you can really sort your stuff out out there. It's good for that. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. To get your priorities right, you know, and. Your main priority, you know, of course, I believe I believe in, in reaching out to others and stuff, but, you know, my main priorities in, in life, I think, if you want to get through life, part of part of it should self-cleaning, clean your, clean your own house, you know, and forgive yourself for whatever. That way you're easy, you're able to forgive others and you're able to do mm-hmm. that, you know, just by working through your own BS. So, uh, you yeah, know, a lot of important things so happen. Huh? As I was just going to say, yeah, a lot of important things happen, uh, in, you know, in your in your head and and spiritually while you're out there. You know, you get yeah. to make a lot of important decisions. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. The guy that I started hiking with, uh, he was pressed for time you know trying to finish on time so he could go back to school and mm-hmm. turns out by the end of the trail he was like yep screw all that i'm gonna just go hike the rest of my life yeah. <laughs> forever yeah. Yeah, pretty yeah, much do that. Get, get, that, get that trail bug um, you know one thing i think that some you know i think hikers realize early on that you know, I can do this whole trail by myself without too much, without a group or anything. But it's kind of good to have a hiking partner out there at least to bounce stuff off, you know, because, yep. you know, I mean, doing things alone, 
it's not doable really late. I mean, as, as life goes on, you know, if you do everything alone, you know, you want to, you, you want to encourage others. You want to be and stuff. I mean, a lot of people do hike a lot, a lot of hikes with anyone, you know, but, you know, I don't know. Do they even go through like that? You know, stuff. So, you know, we got, we've got, uh, we got two, two more to meet here and then, uh, and then we're going to wrap up for time. I'm so, going to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, uh, that wasn't a hint. That, okay, that was a hint. So, um, <laughs> next next up, we have uh, Bobby and Brianna. We've got a, 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 a newlywed couple here from Philadelphia. Uh, and I, I like the way I like the way these guys talk. They're, they sound like Yankees. Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Bobby and Brianna. We live in South Philadelphia. Um, we just got married about four months ago in September. We are through hiking the Appalachian Trail bound starting on march 22nd we're really looking forward to it we both work nine to five jobs right now kind of just been going along with the norm what society expects of us but we both realize it's not something we're into and we're really looking forward to a more free-spirited lifestyle and to kind of do what we want and explore and hike an amazing trail i'm excited for people not to stare at me as weird as they do now while we're up I feel like I look fantastic. He's um, really excited about using those. So I'm just happy to be able to let go. We're running out our house in South Philly and starting this new chapter in our life. We're just super excited and hopefully people want to hear our story. Yeah, we'd love to be able to share our stories and our adventures as we attempt our through hike. We're in B&B Hike the AT on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully to talk to you soon. Thanks. See ya. Now, I, I can't tell if, if these guys wrote out a script and took turns reading it or if they just finish each other's sentences. But I, I, I like these, I like these two. They're, they're a cute couple. I, I, uh, I'm looking forward to following their story. Oh, look, B- Oh, they're here. I, and I also was going to say, yeah, B and B said they were probably going to try to join us in, in the uh, live stream tonight. And I see them, uh, no script, but that was the third take. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys are, you guys are well on your way to being better at this than I am. All right, and I got uh, one more for you. I saved this one for last. This guy, this guy talks for a while. He goes for about three and a half minutes, but he's got a lot of interesting things to say. Uh, I want you to meet Charles, our fourth AT hiker, and last. Hello, my name is Charles. I am twenty, and this year we attempt three. My start date is March twenty fifth. And I'm super excited. Uh, As I get a little closer to the date, though, I'm I'm getting a little nervous, but I think that's okay and pretty normal, given such a large uh, journey it is. I first heard about the AT back in 2014. I saw, I can't remember what it was, but I saw a Reddit post of sorts that um, talked about someone completing the trail and I looked it up and it almost inst- Okay, stop. Does this guy know that he's talking to the guy who, like, does he know that I'm the one? I don't know. I, don't, I wonder if that's, if he means my Reddit post. 2014, it had to be. Sorry. Suddenly I knew it was something I wanted to do. So I went out to a couple outdoor stores and got a bunch of equipment thinking that I'm just going to do it next year. Uh, most of that equipment I ended up replacing as... I learned that a 50 pound pack is just not going to cut it. So fast forward to last summer, I uh, had been working the same job for five years and we got called into the office, the management team. And they told us that the store I worked at was going to be closing. Um, Everyone else seemed kind of frantic, but just in that moment, I just, I just shelved the AT for years and the second that they said the store was closing i just uh, this big smile went over my face and i just knew i was like oh, i'm gonna go hike the at it's a perfect opportunity to do it so i took the severance cashed out my 401k my pension uh and just started preparing i went out and redid my gear list i some of the things i kept like my pack uh but i got you know an ultralight sleep system, one of those ultralight as you can for a hammock. Uh, Got everything I needed and just started uh, 
started training. I do, I do a lot of day hikes since I'm unemployed. Um, but yeah, that's, I got all my gear. I got what I hope is enough money to finish. And, uh, I'm just super pumped. I going into it. I don't really know what to expect. Uh, I think I like it. I've, I've done a few overnight trips before nothing of this magnitude, but for me, I think the main draw is not necessarily the hiking, but just not really knowing what I'm going to be or do day after day. A monotony is really just a, a huge killer for my motivation. So, you know, spending six months of uncertainty, uncertainty is, is really appealing to me. So I'm excited. I'm nervous. And I, I, I guess I'm just waiting to see what happens. And uh, that's kind of life I think I would be most happy with. So wish me luck out there. I, I hope to, uh, hope I can make it. And I think I will, if anything, alone out of spite, just because <laughs> I think half my friends and family think I'm crazy. The other half think I make it. So I kind of want to prove them wrong on both counts. So anyway, uh, thanks for listening, and uh, I'll see you out on the trail. Go. Those are our, our four, uh, our four, I guess five AT hikers who we're following this year. Jeffrey, Ashley, Bobby and Brianna, and Charles. So uh, if you guys can think of any, any specific questions that you'd like to ask those guys, I will be emailing them uh, back and forth throughout their hikes. And if there's anything you want to know or just any words of encouragement, that you want to pass on uh you know the the podcast is the place to do it so we're gonna like i said we're gonna check in with them from time to time uh bnb since you guys are here put your instagram link up in the uh up in the chat and i'll add that to our show notes too and uh and we'll go from there how prepared are you to poop in the wild (laughs) uh go ahead i got a question for all of them and i'm just curious to know what gear or items they end up getting rid of in the first week or two. What are they going to leave in that, in that second or third shelter for whoever wanders by to pick it up? <laughs> Hiker box. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll pass that along. Um, and what I would also like to add to that is we are also going to be following some PCT hikers this year. Uh, I'll be reaching out to them and arranging uh, audio audio clips to play the next time we meet. So we'll meet our next batch of hikers and we'll just kind of alternate or mix and match. I don't want to do too many of them because I don't I don't want it to become uh, I don't I don't we we shouldn't need to put up a grid. <laughs> you know what I mean to remember who's who. I try to keep it relatively small, but uh, I think this is going to be a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to following everybody's hikes and hearing their stories. If you would like to send questions for our hikers, questions to the show, or if you are one of those hikers who wants to just submit uh, an, an audio file, a voice memo to tell us little stories about how your hike is going, the email address to do that is, uh, think of the name of the podcast, Stories from the Trail, show at gmail.com, and uh, we will do our best to get your questions on the air. So last thing before we go, I, I always like to uh, I always like to read five star reviews if I can, but I did not prepare. So it might I thought take... you were gonna say, but we didn't get any. No, we have one. We have a new one. <laughs> really crushed me. I know, but uh, I did not get it up on my screen in time, so I'm gonna not do I mean, that. This week. You mean like from iTunes, like iTunes? Yeah, reviews? yeah, we we got some more five star iTunes reviews. Uh, here's oh here's that here's should be one. really quick to find. Here's, okay, yeah, here's here's one of our new uh, five star reviews from iTunes. This one comes to us from 
All right, now we don't really have. Well, I can't. I still haven't found them, so I'm just going to edit that in. I'm going to pretend. Wait, I, just, I actually so, do have one. So I just finished reading it, and now you give your fake reaction to our five star review. You, do you want me to just read you the actual five star review? That's probably better than my idea. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I love I love how people are now ragging on you for not preparing in the chat. That that makes me happy. This five-star review is from Eagle Scout. Inspiration in abundance. I've been itching to get out on a trail ever since my first backpacking trip with my scout troop in 2014, but I never seem to have the time. This show has been such an inspiration to make time, and I've learned so much for my 2023 through hike that the years can't come fast enough. Woohoo! Wow. 2023! That's oh exciting! Goodness. Oh, Early in the planning stages, that's going to be really exciting. No pressure, yeah, but right. we've got to produce three years worth of content, guys. Get cracking. <laughs> we got to make it to this guy's through hike, so go oh. through. You know what that sounds like? A lot of poop. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of poop. <laughs> so cool. Great. People like us. Or they like you. People like us. They're going to start. They're going to like Reptar now that he's part of the team, too. Oh, yeah. Aww. Yeah, somebody, <laughs> some, someone asked if uh, if if Megan was going away. Are we are we losing Megan? Megan Megan's not going away, but Megan has a new job, and it's uh, it's been it's been very demanding. So my time has been uh, not very free. <laughs> okay. Well, as of the last uh, ninety days, I think uh, I think I've been I think I've been with my new job for for ninety days. It will get better, and and I'll and I'll be back. But I'm currently in a training phase where I'm doing a twelve week class, along with all of my on call hours. So, all right. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. So I promise I'm not going away, guys. <laughs> so frequently or as consistently as I think I will, and everyone would hope. I forget who who asked me that, and I said. Uh, I said, don't worry. Uh, wow, I forget how I said this. Mommy and, mommy and daddy aren't breaking up. But, <laughs> mommy but, and daddy aren't getting a divorce. Ma, mommy, mommy and daddy aren't getting a divorce, no. Mommy and it's daddy just... aren't breaking up, but daddy's boyfriend is moving in with us for a little while. Uh, oh, no, I'm a homewrecker. <laughs> no, no, no. This is a non-traditional relationship. It's inclusive. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> uh, and all we mean by that is that one of you guys are going to read the outro credits this week. We're reading credits now? Oh, I don't know. This is this is kind of this is the part where the fade, the theme music fades in and uh and we say something that kind of gets a laugh. I don't know. Did we not talk about poop enough? Oh, I don't know. I suppose we got we got some time to talk about. You've poop. got a minute and a half. Squeeze one out. <laughs> you know what someone asked me today? Oh, someone! I got a really funny thing. Someone what asked me not today. Sometime in the past couple weeks, um, hiking came up, and and the AT came up, and so the the question to me was, uh, so if like there's you know thousands of people doing the AT, then like poop everywhere up and down the trail. Like, oh my God. isn't there? Isn't it just like the swath of area where there's just like just a bunch of feces. Yes. A valid, yeah, yeah, it was a really valid question. Yes, and it's called it's called New York City, Philadelphia, Washington <laughs> D.C. Yeah, oh, it's the poop. God. It's the, you know uh, they talk about those cities being you know so dense and connected that it's a, a what a megalopolis. It's the it's the fecalopolis is or fecal. Fecalopolis. I don't know. fecalopolis. <laughs> Metropolis? What am I? Tra- a poopopolis? I don't know. A fecal, a fecalopolis. You got it. Fecalopolis. <laughs> fecalopolis. What if everybody flushed their toilets at the same time, all at once, man? All to the same place, man. Whoa. I don't know. Our oceans. <laughs> um. Hey. Yeah. Uh, True. Megan or <laughs> Megan or Reptar, uh, flip a coin, and uh, one of you guys say what our Patreon is and why people should uh, should go there, and then we'll wrap it up. How do we flirt? flirt how do we flirt? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll let Megan field this one. <laughs> go ahead, Megan. Yeah, since, since I since I just said flirt <laughs> Kern. <laughs> That's better have me. Pronounce, better have me tell whole everyone where Patreon to go. Like that. Or you per- can support. Urge. 
<laughs> you can find more about our show and support the show at patreon.com slash stories from the trail. Do I need to spell Patreon? No. But anyone who supports at the $3 a month or more level gets a free recipe for Kern Flurps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's uh, corn kern flurps available only at Crazy Larry's Hostel and and um, oh, oh god, kern oh. flurp. Okay, <laughs> hey guys, we we did it again. Uh, we we finished on time. Congratulations. Oh no no. Uh, well, I was gonna say next week. <laughs> Net one week from tonight, I will be uh, teaching a class at RAI. I'm not even going to try to stream it. So uh, I will not be on. If you guys want to do one of these without me, we can work out the details between now and then. But uh, I will not be I will not be here next week. So there you go. <laughs> Larry gets here late and says, what are corn flirps? <laughs> <laughs> it- <laughs> <sighs> Just know that you'll be serving them, Larry. <laughs> oh shit! I, damn it, Larry. I'm sorry. I did. I put. I put Larry on mute earlier because he was typing and we could hear him. All right, Larry, you're back. I'm sorry. I wasn't typing earlier, man. You were. It was all that background noise was coming off. Uh, it was like twenty. It was a twenty. It was yeah, earlier. Yeah, Fozzie's plane was taking off. Yeah, Fozzie. <laughs> sorry, Larry. I'm going to hear you. I can hear you there, but yeah, I knew. Stories from the Trail is a production of thetrek.co. Zach Davis, Editor-in-Chief. Your hosts are Green Giant, Voldemort, and Reptar. The show is easy to find on pretty much any social media you can think of as long as you know how to use Google and spell the name of the show correctly. Our theme music is by Lee Rosevear. Additional music this week by David Feslian. And some sound effects by Zaps Flat. The show is mixed, edited. The show is recorded. The show is recorded, mixed, edited, and mixed. <laughs> the show is recorded, mixed, and edited by me in my blanket fort. The show is mixed, edited, and recorded by the show is the show is recorded. The show is recorded, mixed, edited. The show is recorded, mixed, edited. Blanket Fort Studios, which is just me in my basement with a blanket over my head. Thanks for listening. We're selling Bob Ross on that one. Rope Wobbler Mangrove. <laughs> <laughs>